for today's event, a memorandum of understanding was received, was reviewed, and agreed upon by all candidates today uh, prior to this morning's event. Uh, questions for today's event were constructed by the Chamber's Government Affairs Committee. Uh, the order in which the candidates will be seated and answer the questions was determined by a coin flip prior to today's program. Uh, the forum will last no longer than 90 minutes, beginning with the asking of the first question. And we ask kindly that the audience remain quiet throughout the event, not address any candidate, applaud, or comment on any candidate's answers. So having reviewed the protocol, I would ask uh, kindly that the candidates for prothonotary please come to the stage. Sherry, why are you running for the office of Profonitary? Um, I've been there for almost five years. Um, I am a very much a people person. Um, I look at the job in the office as something that we need um, someone with compassion. People who come into our office are hurting, they're upset, they're angry, um, and they sometimes need a couple minutes to calm down before they can actually do what they need to do. Um, I feel that um, it doesn't, um, you, can, you can work your whole life, you can work 50 years at one job, but if you don't have the drive and the determination and the dedication to get the job done, and the caring and compassion for people and the community that you serve, um, it's just putting in time. Thank you. Candidate for Auditor, Mary. Why are you running for the office of auditor? First of all, thank you for allowing us to be here today. I appreciate that, the opportunity. Um, I'm, running, I'm running for re-election. <coughs> I've been in the office for four years. I feel I have the experience um, to do the job. We do an audit of the whole county every year. Um, every department, tax collectors, um, every department in the county. We have developed a good working relationship with them. I um, especially have with, with my tax collector ladies, I always bring that up <clears throat> because that's a very important part of uh, the county income. And uh, we, we keep our records, we want to make sure everything is transparent, and we have to have our audit um, completed by July of, um, of every, every year, the 1st of July. And we have completed that audit every year on time. We've resolved issues that have come up. Um, I just uh, feel that I have the experience for the job, love the job, love Bedford County, um, and I would just hope that uh, the people would continue to support me and, uh, you know, keep me, keep me in, and uh, uh, I guess that's it. I, yeah, that's it. 
I'm sorry. I lost it at the end. I'm sorry. <laughs> the next question uh, for candidates for prothonotary, Barbara, what makes you a more qualified candidate? Sherry, what makes you a more qualified candidate? Um, I think that um, I have, my husband and I ran a business for 10 years. So I'm drawing on that experience in the business world, as well as the fact that um, I'm the only one in the office who has been trained on the electronic um, filing system. Um, and. Being that I am the only one in there that is trained on that, I feel that as the um, paperless filings are going to continue to evolve, um, I would be um, a good person to, um, to lead that in our office. Um, I just think that I know that down the road the criminal filings are going to start going paperless. Um, and. Allegheny County at this point is already paperless, so I just think that would be a good thing for our office as well, and I could just build on that that system of uh, the electronic filings and you know move the office forward. Thank you. Our candidate for auditor, Mary, what makes you a qualified candidate? I feel that I'm a qualified candidate. I've been in the office. I've been in the office for four years. I've learned the inner workings. Um, I feel that I'm very competent with my job. I'm very conscientious with my job. I take it very seriously. Um, for, the, for the citizens of Bedford County, I think it's very important that you, you know, have a sincere attitude and um, really be conscientious at what you're, at what you're doing in your job. And um, like, I, like I said, the experience I have, I've, learned a lot over the last few years and I would just really feel that I am the qualified the qualified candidate for the job. Thank you. Our candidates for prothonotary. Barbara, what are the most pressing issues or challenges facing you and your office if elected? And what will you do to address them? Research it. Um, we'll keep the office all updated. Um, the public can come in and do any researching that they need to have done, and it'll be on the computer. Thank you, Sherry. What are the most pressing issues or challenges facing you and your office if elected, and what will you do to address them? Um, I know one of the big issues that we have are, like I said before, it's the, the people that come into our office are hurting. They have issues, custody, uh, divorce, uh, whatever it might be, and they're, they're people. And they just need somebody that's willing to listen for a few minutes before they, so they can get their composure. Um, that's an issue. Um, there's a lot of custody issues, um, these parents that are trying to get their kids back, um, to me that's an issue. And I think that to be one-on-one -on -one with people and show that you have a heart and um, you're compassionate towards them, um, I know it doesn't sound like a big issue, but to me that's an issue. Um, 
these are the people that we are elected to serve. So um, I think you need to take the time, whether it be five minutes or ten minutes or just a minute, um, to listen to what they have to say and let them get what they need to get off their shoulders um, before they can actually start the process. Um, another issue um, in the office, I think, would be to retain and maintain the employees that we have. Um, we have a good crew right now, and it would be great to just keep um, the ones that we have that are learning and progr progress through um, this transition. Thank you. And our candidate for auditor, Mary, what are the most pressing issues or challenges facing you and your office if elected? And what will you do to address them? Some of the most pressing issues we have in the auditor's office are coming across mistakes that we find in the county financial records. Um, could be just um, an error in somebody punching their numbers in. We, uh, that, that's basically the main issue in our office. We work with a lot of numbers. Um, there's a lot of departments in the county, and we work with every one of them. We divide our accounts up. We work with every one of them. We look for any mistakes, any issues that um, would come up. And sometimes, sometimes they're big, sometimes they're small, but we work with the departments to resolve them, if at all possible. But we definitely want to keep um, everything honest and transparent, and um, that's, that's what I will continue, I'll strive to continue to do that, um, just keeping everything, just keeping everything honest and on the level, and I, like I said, I just am I'm very sincere about this, I, I don't take this job lightly, and I just uh, feel that's, that, that's basically what the most important issue is in the auditor's office. Honesty and transparency. Thank you. Oh, 20 more questions to go. <laughs> this is the final question, and this question, like all the other questions, each candidate will have up to two minutes to answer. Our candidates for profanitary, Barbara. What will your priorities be if you are elected? <coughs> to keep accurate records, to hopefully keep the employees that are there. Um, we do have a good working team. Just keep everything updated, maintained, work with the people. Um, have them be respected when they come into the office, that they are who elected us into office. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate for Profanitary Sherry, what will your priorities be if you are elected? Um, first and foremost, my priorities will be the staff. Um, second, um, I, I am a firm believer in this electronic filing. Um, I think it would be a great resource to save the county money. Um, so I would try to implement and get started on this, um, doing the criminal filings electronically um, and getting uh, what we already have onto the computer. Um, the, there are a lot of filings that come through our office. Um, that you may or may not know. Um, and we're running out of room on the, um, a few of this, the criminal side especially, we're just running out of room to put files. So um, in a cost-effective manner, I think this would be great, and I think that would probably be one of the first things that I would um, try to get going would be to move this forward with the um, electronic filings. Thank you. And our candidate for auditor, and uh, by the way, as a note, our other candidates for auditor were not able to participate in this morning's event. Our candidate for auditor, auditor Mary, what will your priorities be if elected? My priorities are going to stay the same as they have the last four years. I'm going to do the job to the best of my ability. I'm a hard worker. 
I'm conscientious. These are my priorities to do the best job possible that I, that I can. Uh, we try to keep the office very cost efficient also up there. Um, we try not to, we try not to spend a lot. We, we try to keep our costs low. We'll continue to do that. And um, just once again, I'm just, I'm going to continue to do what I have for the last four years. And that is uh, keeping, keeping the office transparent. And like I said, I'm a hard worker. And uh, those are my main goals, to come, in, to come in, do my job, do it to the best of my ability for the citizens of Bedford County. And um, I, hope, I hope that they will uh, respect that and understand that and continue to have faith in me for the next four years. And thank you once again. Thank you. Would you uh, join me in thanking our candidates for profanity? For <laughs> For segment two of our event this morning, we will welcome to the stage our candidate for district attorney, Leslie Childers Potts, our candidate for coroner, Russell Rusty Steyer, and our candidate for treasurer, Melissa Cobb. Would you please join us on stage? Leslie Childers Potts. Leslie, why are you running to continue to serve in your county office? A year ago, I started something that I haven't had the opportunity to finish yet. There are things that I would like to accomplish in Bedford County. Uh, there are things that I believe I am able to help put in place that will make Bedford County a better place to live and better serve the citizens of Bedford County. I want to stay where I am so that I can accomplish those things that I've been working on for the last year. Thank you. Our candidate for coroner, Rusty, why are you running to continue to serve in your county office? Well, as a county coroner, when I took office four years ago, uh, the, the standard, um, we were a little bit below, below where we needed to be throughout the state. And through a computer program that we are now running in the office and a lot of the testing that we're doing in the office for overdoses and things like that. Um, we're kind of coming up to a standard and uh, we're very active in the state association, so we're bringing kind of the state resources into our county uh, on the state level. So I just wanted to continue in the office and moving it forward um, and uh, just keep going the way we've been going. Thank you. And our candidate for treasurer, Melissa, why are you running to continue to serve in your county office? I am running for re-election. I've been in the treasurer's office now. I was served as deputy for five years and now as treasurer for four years. So I'm using my experience and I love, I love being in the treasurer's office. I love working with numbers. Um, we've been doing very well bringing things up to date, improving things. Uh, the state is uh, updating our dog license and our hunting program and our fishing program. So we're staying up to date and current with those programs and just being in there and I love working with the citizens of Bedford County on all levels for anything that they come in and being accessible 
that we can help them with. Thank you. Our candidate for district attorney, Leslie, what makes you qualified to continue to hold this office? I've been a practicing attorney since 2004. During that time frame, I've worked in and around Bedford County uh, during that entire length of time. I've worked in multiple counties surrounding Bedford County, including Blair, Somerset, Cambria, Indiana, and a handful of others. Uh, despite the fact that I have worked in a multitude of counties during the time that I've been a practicing attorney, Bedford County was always home to me. So when I had the opportunity to come back to Bedford County full time, uh, approximately 12 years ago, I believe it was, I jumped at that opportunity. Uh, that gave me a chance to uh, become significantly more experienced in the practice of criminal law. I worked in the public defender's office for a period of time. And uh, then when the position in the district attorney's office became available, I applied for that position. Uh, quite frankly, because from the time I was about 16 years old and was in high school, my dream was always to work in the Bedford County District Attorney's Office. Uh, so in January 2012, I finally had the opportunity to do something that I wanted to do almost my entire life. So I had the experience uh, to be able to perform this job successfully, but even more than the experience that I have in my background, I have a drive and desire to serve the citizens of Bedford County and I have a drive and desire to make sure that the office of the district attorney is one uh, that is transparent and holds to the highest standards of integrity and prosecutes criminal offenders based upon the offense that they committed and their criminal history, not who they are, who they're related to, uh, who they might not get along with. Those are not things that I'm supposed to consider, and I don't consider those things. Thank you. Our candidate for coroner, Rusty, what makes you qualified to continue to hold this office? I am state certified from the Attorney General's Office through the Coroner's Association. Uh, I do my continuing education every year. Uh, we do a lot of training uh, throughout the state. We have a uh, mass fatality plan. I don't know if you know that in county, each county, the coroner's office is in charge of the mass fatality plan, which we never had before. We have one now in place. We are more prepared today than we've ever been. Hopefully we never need to act on our training, that uh, we are um, constantly training for mass fatality throughout the Commonwealth. We travel and train. We, it's not a matter of uh, if, it's a matter of when it's going to happen and pray that it does not happen. But um, there are four, for example, there's four mass fatality disaster trailers throughout the state. And uh, what they are, they're refrigeration trailers. If we would have a mass fatality, it's a storage um, facility, it's mobile. We also have a support trailer with supplies, for example, body bags, things like that. Um, gloves, lighting, heating, things, everything that we would need for our own scene uh, mass fatality. And uh, I put in for a trailer, and we do have one house here in Bedford County. So um, we do a lot of training throughout the year with it. And like I said, hopefully we never need it. But um, we're definitely moving forward, and hopefully my training, someday we will not ever need to use it, but we are getting prepared if we do. Thank you. Our candidate for treasurer, <coughs> Melissa, what makes you qualified to continue to hold this office? Again, as I've stated, I've been in the treasurer's office for nine years. I've been with the county a total of 19 years um, next month. So I have that experience of being in the treasurer's office and uh, doing working well with all of the department heads to because why go every money that comes through that county comes through my office and it's an office of two. Uh, so we handle everything that comes in, and we just went through a state audit for the last five years, and everything was to the penny, everything was kosher, everything was good, and we got that approval from the state. So I hold highly uh, that, and we've been going to the treasurer's conventions every year uh, since I've been in office to learn the new procedures, learn the new what's up and coming, and staying up to date and 
just finding out what, what is happening across our state with the treasurers. Uh, and we also have people that we can confide in if there's a problem. Staying up to date with them and that communication that if there is ever a question that you're not sure of, you can call another treasurer and you know talk with them about it. So I think I have that experience and uh, communication right there now. Thank you. Our candidate for district attorney, Leslie. What are the most pressing issues or challenges facing you and your office, and how will you address them? That's a loaded question for my office. <laughs> to be frank, even a year later, the most difficult thing that we overcome on a daily basis or try to overcome on a daily basis is making sure that everything we do is as transparent as it can be and we serve the citizens of Bedford County with integrity. There has been a lot of things that we've had to do over the last year to try and make sure that the things we do on a daily basis fit that mold. We've had to make changes and I say we because I have a staff and I, I don't do these things alone. They assist me on a daily basis. They perform tasks that need to be performed. I have people in my office that I can trust to go to court. I have people in my office that I can trust uh, to make sure that communications with other attorneys are what they need to be. Uh, so I, I try and always say us because it's not just about me. But uh, I'm lucky that the people that are in my office see the need to make sure that what we do is as transparent as possible. The people that work in my office see and understand the significant importance in my office right now, especially, of making sure that the things that we do are the things that are supposed to be done and that we're serving the citizens of Bedford County in a way that they deserve to be served. So despite the fact that it is a year later, everyone in my office understands that this is a battle that we still face on a daily basis. And despite the fact that we fight that battle on a daily basis, everyone in my office still continues to fight that battle with me. Thank you. Our candidate for coroner, Russell, <coughs> what are the most pressing issues or challenges facing you and your office, and how will you address them? Probably the main thing would be probably the Drug, drug epidemic we have facing not just our county but the whole state. And, and the part, people say, well, what's your role in, in that? Well, the job of the coroner is to determine cause and manner of death. When any unexplained death, any emergency room death, any death occurring out at the correction facility, any unattended doctor death, so there's a lot to it, any infant deaths, there's, there's a lot of investigations um, throughout the office. So when we have an overdose or a suspected overdose, there's a lot of things that, that you, know, you gotta start right away. First of all, I've gotta notify the state police if they're not notified already, or the local borough police departments. The district attorney's involved, um, my pathologist, forensic pathologist. So, so we have to get an autopsy order on these suspected overdoses because we're not sure exactly maybe what, what happened, what kind of drug it may be. So once we get the autopsy order and do complete it, then, then we take that information and that's filed down through not only the district attorney's office, but the DEA, the attorney general's office. There's a lot of players involved that it's constant communication with. So that is not cheap. Um, autopsies are costing us about $3,000 per case. And some toxins, uh, tox uh, reports, uh, they could be upwards to five to eight hundred dollars on top of that. So I'd say the budget and, and, and these, these, these overdoses, you know, um, not too far away from us, uh, county, you know, they can have four or five overdoses on weekend. We're very blessed that um, that has not hit our way quite yet, but Last year we had 20 overdoses in, in the county, so um, I'd say with the budget, with the uh, opioid epidemic, would be much your biggest challenge. Thank you. 
Our candidate for treasurer, Melissa, what are the most pressing issues or challenges facing you and your office, and how will you address them? The most pressing issue I find is being honest and the books equaling to the penny, uh, and that's what I strive to continue to do. Also, uh, working, being an honest, motivational um, leader that uh, I can work well with the other directors, the other department heads, with commissioners, uh, the finance director, the auditors. Um, we all have a working relationship and need to work together. So my, that would be my biggest pressing issue is to continue that working relationship. Thank you. And our final question for our panel today of which you'll have two minutes to answer each. Our candidate for district attorney, Leslie, what will your priorities and goals be in your next term? I feel like to a certain extent, I've answered that a little bit, um, just maintaining that integrity and that transparency through my office that we've worked for the last year uh, to try and put forward. But in addition to that, and this is, this is an issue that has um, been in the newspapers and, and uh, been addressed at prison board meetings, been addressed at my uh, criminal justice advisory board meeting, I am very interested, very passionate about working towards building a day reporting and day treatment center here in Bedford County. We have an opioid epidemic here in Bedford County, it's not just in other areas, it's not just in the cities. We are lucky that we don't have as many overdose deaths as they do in the cities. However, we are unfortunately in a location where the things that those people need to get well aren't always available, or aren't always available the minute or the day that they need those things. There are wait lists for treatment centers, and a day treatment and day reporting center would provide treatment here in Bedford County, but it would also provide the probation office, my office, and a, a multitude of other offices the opportunity to not only help people who maybe aren't getting the help that they need to address the issues that they have, but it would also allow us the opportunity to more closely supervise those individuals. Uh, they would be reporting on a daily basis or on a weekly basis. Uh, they would be subjected to random drug testing on a more frequent basis so that we have someone not only giving them that information, but also Thank helping you. them implement. And our candidate for coroner, Rusty, <coughs> what will your priorities and goals be in your next term? Well, my priorities and goals, I mean, we're going to keep running the office uh, just as we are. Um, we're going to do uh, the investigations that, that we need to do. We are, uh, so far this year, we're at 72 death investigations already. Um, we're probably going to top out around 300, 350 before the end of the year. And uh, we're going to hold each case and look at each one individually and make our decisions whether we need to move forward with autopsies, drug testing, and things like that and just working with the families. I mean, I'm working with families that are at their worst time in their life. And to sit with those families, sometimes you can sit with them for 10 minutes, and sometimes it's four or five hours, and sometimes it's 10 weeks. I mean, I'm still daily talking with a lady that lost her child here just earlier this year. I'll get a phone call from her yet today, I'm sure. And it's just helping these families through their worst time, and I'm blessed that I can walk through this with these people, and, and uh, for the most part, after our conversations and, and our meetings, and um, they can walk away with the answers and might not always be what they want to hear, but um, I give them the truth and the honest. I tell them, don't ask me a question if you don't want to know the answer because I can't sugarcoat my job. I have to be frank with them. Sometimes, not always, they want to hear it, but I tell them, tell them what, what the truth is, what the autopsy reports are, the tox reports, and uh, Another goal is to be a key player uh, throughout this with the drug epidemic, and uh, hopefully we can uh, get that number down. It has come down a little bit and, uh, throughout the state and uh, in our county, and we want to keep doing that. My other goal is to uh, 
be national certified through the Corners Association. So that uh, I'll be working towards, towards that too. Thank you. Thank you. Our candidate for treasurer, Melissa, what will your priorities and goals be in your next term? My priorities and goals would be to remain honest with integrity and to do my job to the best of my ability as I have done for the last four years as treasurer and five years as deputy. I would also like to see um, working with the commissioners, uh, we can get a better pay scale for all, all of the county employees to get up, up to date where a lot of the uh, businesses and the pay scale should be for our employees. Uh, and also working with them to maybe get a longevity clause for their employees that have been there for years um, that don't have anything right now. So I'd really like to see that implemented and get a longevity clause put in place and a better wages for all employees. Thank you. Our candidate for district attorney, coroner, and treasurer. Please thank you. segment of today's event will feature our candidates for sheriff. In alphabetical order, Wayne Emmerich, Diane Nelson, and Eric Wister. Could you join us on stage, please? with the other candidates, each candidate for sheriff will get two minutes to answer each question and uh, as determined in a coin toss, Eric Mister will go first with your response to the question. Eric, why are you running for the office of sheriff and what role do you think the office has in the county? Well, good morning. Thank you, everyone, for being here and for the opportunity to speak. Um, I have aspirations and compassion to serve as your next county sheriff because I respect the unique role the sheriff has as uh, chief law enforcement officer of the county. Given that, the sheriff has countywide jurisdiction, hence Bedford County. At that point in time, the sheriff's office has so much um, opportunity to do things for Bedford County. The sheriff obviously leads and manages the sheriff's office. There is a host of responsibilities with civil law rules and responsibilities with the sheriff's office. And as a candidate, it's been my goal um, and intention to only convey a positive message to the people of Bedford County that I am here to serve you. I am here to work responsibly uh, to be your sheriff. And this is more than a campaign to me because I'm a life president of Bedford County and I have a seven point agenda I have implemented as what my family and I would like to see in a sheriff for a county. Thank you. Thank you. Wayne, why are you running for the office of sheriff and what role do you think the office has in the county? Uh, first, I'd like to say thank you for uh, allowing me to uh, come here and speak. Um, I think the role of a sheriff is one of, of importance, uh, one being that they're the head law enforcement official for the county. Um, I think that a sheriff should be someone that has a open door policy for the public, um, work for the court system. Um, I think that the uh, experience that I bring uh, as a law enforcement officer uh, of 33 years, I've always wanted to be a sheriff. And I, I just think that uh, overall the, the sheriff has many hats he has to wear and um, you know I, I think that it's important to know that he works for the court system the people 
and he parallels the police departments and assists in a lot of uh, natural disaster stuff that, that uh, could, could possibly happen. And so it's important that we have somebody in there that can wear many hats. Thank you. Thank you. Diane, why are you running for the office of sheriff and what role do you think the office has in the county? Okay, first I want to say thank you and excuse me for being a few minutes late this morning. I do have a sick husband. But um, I am running for the office of sheriff Number one, mainly because I've been in there for a total of 20 years. I've been a deputy sheriff for 16 years, and I've been the chief deputy for the last four years. So I do feel that I definitely have the experience to run that office. Um, and the priorities of a sheriff in the county, obviously, number one, are the core responsibilities of the courthouse. Um, to make sure that the courthouse is safe and secure, to transport the inmates back and forth, and to do civil process throughout the county. Um, the um, next priority, obviously, we would continue to assist um, the district attorney's office with the drug problem in our county. Um, it is huge, and we would assist the district attorney's office, and we would still assist the local, state, and federal police with the epidemic problem that we do have in the county. Thank you. Thank you. Our second question, uh, Wayne will be the first respondent. <coughs> Wayne, what experience, qualities, and characteristics makes you qualified to hold the position? Well, like I said before, I'm 33 years in law enforcement, 30 years as a chief of police, um, a combat veteran, served with the United States Marine Corps, um, was a sergeant in there, an administrator. been with the fire department for 16 years and served as a lieutenant and that's an important role in, in the county because the sheriff has to deal with natural disasters. Um, I served as a uh, president currently in the Internal Order of Police. Um, I have many, many uh, boards I set on um, and I think with my experience as a police officer I understand the uh, role the sheriff has to uh, take on and responsibilities. And I think that with all that I've had over the years, just as a police officer in the fire department and um, just my military experience, the Marine Corps seemed fit to promote me to a sergeant. And um, I think with all that and collectively put that together, with my education, um, I think uh, I would be a good candidate uh, for the uh, job, for sure. Thank you. Diane, what experiences, qualities, and characteristics makes you qualified to hold the position? Um, first and foremost, I am the only candidate right now that is currently certified and have the qualifications to hold that office, so I would not have to attend the um, Sheriff's Academy and State College. Um, second of all, um, the Sheriff's Office is strictly civil law. Um, local police is all, it's criminal. So I've experienced the Sheriff's Office for 20 years, strictly civil law. So I'm experienced with that. I am also experienced with local police. I work for Bedford Borough Police Department for about six years. Um, so I do hold my Act 123 Municipal Police Officers Training. I also attended the um, DOC, or Department of Corrections Training in Elizabethtown because I worked at the um, prison for a total of 10 years. And um, I was, the last several years at the prison, I was a lieutenant. And like I said, the last four years, or, or this, my current four years at the Sheriff's Office as a Deputy Sheriff, um, I'm currently the only candidate um, certified with the local law enforcement um, with methamphetamine clandestine safety um, training. Um, I've attended several drug trainings. I've um, been involved with several um, methamphetamine labs with the state police. I 
worked closely with the state police vice unit for that. Um, I am an NRA member. Um, I'm a member of the PMLA, it's Pennsylvania Narcotics Officers Association. Um, I think um, that definitely my qualifications, certifications definitely prioritize me for me to be the next sheriff of Bedford County. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Eric, what experiences, qualities, and characteristics makes you qualified to hold the position? I have uh, attained a training and education in the Pennsylvania Department of Corrections. I worked at the correctional facility twice in 99 and uh, returned in 2010 as a lieutenant corrections officer. I have attained the Pennsylvania um, Deputy Sheriff's Training uh, from Penn State. I got the full comprehensive uh, curriculum there. I worked in the Sheriff's Office in 2000, 2007. Received all kinds of unique uh, opportunities from serving civil process papers, uh, bench warrants, assisting local police, uh, vehicle stops, uh, criminal arrests, things of that nature. I've also have attained uh, the Municipal Police uh, 120 certification. Um, I never worked as a police officer, but I do have that training. At the same time, I have a bachelor's of, uh, um, degree in criminal justice from Liberty University. And at the, with that in mind, um, I come from a mental health background where I'm extensively trained in mental health to include psychology and different concepts like that. And um, I think that your next sheriff needs to have corrections experience, deputy sheriff's training experience, and utilizing that training because historically your sheriff has also been a warden at time before the uh, prison board was established. I have served um, as a nominating uh, chairman of the local church for uh, selecting people to, uh, for church business. I'm currently the chairman of the Everett Cub Scouts, which I take very uh, good pride in that. Um, we're looking at you know, modeling and role modeling to our youth in the Everett Area School District and Northern Bedford County School District. Together, working with other leaders and mentors from the Fort Bedford District has been a very rewarding experience. I'm currently a soccer coach for my daughter's soccer team. Uh, these attributes, these skills, management, and leadership capabilities I've gotten from corrections through my time with Pure Star enables me to be an effective leader, and I'm ready and prepared to take on that responsibility. Thank you. Diane, if you would respond to this next question first, please. Diane, one of the most pressing issues and ch or challenges facing you and your office, if elected, and how will you face those challenges? First and foremost, the pressing issues of the office is the fact that we work for the courts. We have to make sure that we secure the courthouse, get the inmates over for the judges. That's first and foremost. The, um, that's what we do. We work for the courts. We're not... Technically, by um, the Pennsylvania statute, we don't have investigative powers, so that would be second in nature. Our pr first priority is the courthouse, serving the civil process, doing sheriff's cells. We will continue to do that, and as long as we have, it's a little pressing right now because we're short-staffed, and we keep losing people because of the wages. Um, so hopefully we can get the wages up. That's a constant battle throughout the whole county, um, not just the sheriff's office, but throughout the whole county. So I would definitely, um, although I cannot be in charge or have anything to do with the union negotiations, I would totally stand behind, firmly stand behind um, the negotiations of the deputies with the um, commissioners and so forth with that. But um, definitely the courthouse is the first and foremost priority to make sure we do what we need to do for the safety and security of the courthouse and to have the inmates brought over for the judges and to get the civil process served throughout the county. Thank you. Eric, what are the most pressing issues or challenges facing you and your office if elected, and how will you face those challenges? If elected as your next sheriff, I want to take a look at the uh, recruitment and retention uh, for the office. I understand the employee wages are a concern, and I feel that can be addressed in time with uh, collaboration, and I am hopeful with that. At the same time, coming 
from a uh, background with mental health as a supervisor. I'm all throughout Bedford County, Saxon, Woodbury, down the Hyman, and I must tell you, mental health is compounded by the opioid issue. I see it, my office has seen it as a significant issue. We've gotten extensive training on it. Realizing back in 2015, Pennsylvania was ranked fourth highest in the nation in uh, the opioid crisis. So I'm sure the statistics have changed on that. But I feel the opioid issue is a concern, and again, uh, employment, with the uh, recruitment and uh, retention with the sheriff's office. And again, this thing won't happen quickly, but I feel with collaboration and time, we can certainly get some uh, results. Thank you. Thank you. Wayne, what are the most pressing issues or challenges facing you and your office if elected? And how will you face those challenges? Well, I think one of the biggest challenges right now for an incoming sheriff is going to be to try to have employee uh, retention. You've you got deputies coming in there at $11.20 an hour in today's world. Um, in 2008, the police budget, or the sheriff's budget, was $570,000. And it's four hundred eighty-three today. So. It went down over $100,000, and I think it's reflecting the uh, current state with with the uh, with the deputies not being able to be employed to for retention. I would my labor law experience and as a leadership experience, I would go to the commissioners and say, "Hey, listen, 2019, you got 19 weeks of training for each one of these deputies." They're going out and they're serving PFAs. They're putting their life on the line. And we need to make them look important again. Uh, they're serving civil papers, levies, <coughs> tax notices, court security. They're doing all this, but they're not being compensated for it. And the sheriff is not going to be able to move forward until we set that base down and set a wage, a working wage, and let these people understand that we care about them, and as a manager, I will do that. And I'm, I'm looking forward to putting my experience together as far as uh, working with the court system, parallel on the police, uh, the sheriff's department, and their deputies. Uh, they do uh, criminal stuff if it's, if it's an on-view arrest, and they do have police powers, and it's not simply just civil. So that's where I'm at. Thank you. Our final question, Eric, if you would respond first. Eric, what will your priorities be if you are elected? And specifically, what, if any, changes will you make? If I'm elected as your next sheriff, it will be a great honor to serve Bedford County. Again, I'm a life president here. I look forward to this. I'm working for the people of Bedford County. I believe in this election, and that's why I'm so compassionate about it. In addition to the civil law rules and responsibility of the sheriff's office, that has to come first in priority. I have developed a seven point agenda to better serve the people. It's creative and it's different, and I've given a lot of positive feedback on it. Number one is working with the local district attorney to dismantle and work to help deter illegal drug operations in our communities. We need to make sure our youth are feeling safe and protected. Families feel secure in their neighborhoods. I also want to work to establish partnerships with all local, state, and federal law enforcement issues across the board. Um, our agencies, again, collaboration resources, we must use them. I want to look at establishing a security committee at the courthouse. We definitely want people to come to the courthouse, but we want to make sure we, as law enforcement, are making sure we are ensuring your safety and security, again, collaboratively. I'm not asking for the courthouse to look like an airport, don't get me wrong. But I think, again, we're going to have new leadership, new face in the courthouse. Let's work and get this thing done correctly. I want to make sure we are working on community engagement. I have been talking to teachers, school administrators. I, again, this is my campaign. I'm actively involved with this, about working with our youth in the school districts, parent-teacher associations, our school teachers, awesome people. One of the things I want to do is build community rapport, develop positive relationships, and a positive image for law enforcement is I'm looking to uh, challenge our student athletes to a track race. And I get a lot of eyebrows on that, but people say, well, tell me more about that. Yeah, I want to look at, talk to our high schools. 
middle schools and say, listen, let's get together. Let's do something for charity. Well, how can the sheriff's office help out? I promoted the idea of a track race. With that in mind, it's getting a lot of credibility and feedback. I want to look at working with the correctional facility more closely. I want to make sure we are utilizing our resources with the deputy sheriffs. Thank you. Thank you. Wayne, what will your priorities be if you are elected? And specifically, what, if any, changes will you make? Well, if, if elected, uh, number one, like I stated before, I'm going to push to get a starting living wage for the um, deputies and convey that to the taxpayers because they're the one that's going to pay this. But to help them understand that the uh, sheriff has a vital role in the, in the uh, employment of retention is going to be a major obstacle for the sheriff's department, for any sheriff getting in there. It is for the current one. Second of all, um, I would like to get in there and continue the drug task force help. Uh, you know, 33 years I've worked for three administrations as far as drug task force. Um, I'm DEA trained in meth and lab. Um, I've multiple drug schools, uh, multiple drug arrests over my years. Um, I know when I'm doing in there, I'm a sound police officer. Uh, 33 years of doing that. And um, I got good leadership skills about me. Uh, I got a good common sense about me. Um, I, I think that you know, if I can convey to the taxpayers um, what needs to be done for, for helping the deputies out so we can build from that. And then second of all, stepping up and, and taking on the new challenges as laws change and uh, you know, we may get a new security uh, detail in there if the new judge gets in there and, and wants more manpower, then obviously we're going to have to argue uh, that. And, and uh, So I would hope that I could get in there and assist the DA's office, the drug task force, work for the uh, people of Bedford County, and do the judge's bidding as far as uh, working for the court system and doing what a sheriff's supposed to be doing out there and being available for the public and be in there in case there's a natural disaster or some kind of issue that needs to be done with warrants or whatever. Thank you. Thank you. Diane, what will your priorities be if you are elected? And specifically, what, if any, changes will you make? My priorities would be, if elected, to have a well-trained staff to um, serve the citizens of Bedford County. And um, and to do that, um, they can go for training all over the state. I would send them for that. I mean, like, the disasters that are upcoming, that not if they're going to happen, but they will happen. Um, they need to be trained for that. And they are trained for that. But there's other special trainings that they can go for for that. So and that's obviously a big priority there. Um, and a big, and as far as any changes, another change would be on the um, again the wages. Um, I would stand firmly behind any negotiations for for my deputies. Um, that would be another huge change. Um, but the big priority again is for the um, courthouse and being open to the citizens of Bedford County. And yes, for extracurricular activities, once we do have the um, right to do and, and to do on-view arrest if we see that. But that's an extracurricular activity and, um, and having like a canine that would cost taxpayers several thousands of dollars um, and that's also an investigatory tool as well, excuse me. Um, but yes, that's a big priority of mine is getting the deputies well trained for the positions and to be ready for whatever might happen in this county. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, our candidates for sheriff. Thank you for each of our candidates uh, today for being part of our event. 
Uh, thank you for our event partner, the Bedford County Farm Bureau. And we're praying for good weather, Bob, and to the Bedford County Elks for hosting our breakfast today. Special thanks to Dennis Tice for the use of the sound system, and to our timers, Diana McClure and Casey College of the Government Affairs Committee. Uh, regardless of your political affiliation, we encourage everybody to exercise your right to vote on May 21st. We hope to see you for our final forum, a lunch featuring candidates for county commissioner on Monday, May 6th. Uh, have a nice day, and we'll see you then. Thank you.